Hello everyone, it's Melinda. Today we're going to be looking at a few of my chalcedony uh, specimens. It actually took me the last week to learn how to say that <laughs> because for my forever and ever, for years and years, I pronounced it chalcedony and only recently found out that that's absolutely incorrect. Um, so chalcedony is the proper pronunciation and I will try to adhere, adhere to that throughout the video, but you will have to excuse me if I, you know, muck it up every once in a while. Um, <clears throat> so chalcedony is a cryptocrystalline form of silica. It's composed of very, very fine, uh, intergrowths of quartz and moganite. Uh, so these are both silica minerals, but they differ in that quartz has a trigonal crystal structure, uh, while moganite is monoclinic. So chalcedony can come in a really, really wide variety of colors, um, and its different varieties are usually based off of the kind of color and look that they have. I'll start showing you, uh, this is one of my most favorite pieces from my entire collection. And some people would say, oh, it's just quartz. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm not snobby <laughs> about what types of crystals I love. I just know that I love them. <laughs> and this is one of the ones that I love very, very deeply. Uh, so you can see that blue line of chalcedony. And it's got kind of like a nice cave of quartz crystals. I love it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so like I said, it comes in a wide variety, and I certainly have way more chalcedony than you can see here in my setup today, but they're probably going to have videos of their own. Uh, some examples would be agate, aventurine, bloodstone, carnelian, which I just recently did a video of that you can go see on my, uh, pager group. Chrysoprase, jasper, onyx, sard and sardonyx, and tiger's eye. And there are probably others, to be quite honest. So like I said, this one here is among my very favorites, and it has a beautiful seam of just ghostly, translucent blue chalcedony, along with quartz and even some quartz crystals. And blue chalcedony is actually a little bit controversial. You can tell me your opinion. I would love to know. Look at that, how cool that banding is. <clears throat> so, some people believe that the blue color is caused by trace elements. Um, such Just like carnelian is like a brownish, reddish, orange color from iron and heat. Uh, chrysoprase is like a green to a yellowish green because of nickel. And chrysocolla is like a bluish green and it's colored by copper. So, with that same idea in mind, many people believe that there's just some sort of unknown <laughs> mineral trace within this structure that makes it this ghostly, translucent blue. However, there is another group of people <clears throat> that hypothesize that the blue uh, is caused by the structure of the chalcedony. Uh, that it's composed of really compact masses of tiny quartz crystals and that <clears throat> there is a light interference that's caused by the little voids in between the individual crystals. And this is happening at like a microscopic level, obviously. Um, and they refer to this process as scattering. But there is a lot of uh, controversy as to what is the truth of the matter. I would have guessed that it was caused by some sort of trace element of, of mineral uh, because I assumed <laughs> most coloring other than shillers and effects like that were caused from uh, mineral inclusions. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm no expert and I wasn't aware that there was another theory out there. So please, uh, you know, if you are an expert or just if you have an opinion or, you know, what, what's your gut feeling on the matter? What do you think is causing this beautiful ghostly blue color? I'd love to know. So the other two specimens of chalcedony that I have in my collection are called chalcedony beings. 
And that's actually not a, you know, geological term whatsoever. It's kind of a metaphysical uh, store type term. And there are people that are a bit particular about what terms should be used and you know, that's why I put the little quotations and purposefully mentioned that it's not an, an accurate uh, term. I just happen to love the term and I just think it really, uh, I don't know, it reflects what they look like. Do they not look like these beautiful beings? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but to me they do. And yeah, I just... I like that name, but they've also been called many other things. Um, agate concha, uh, chalcedony rose, snake agate, and a variety of other names, to be honest. So these types of structures are usually uh, formed within weathered uh, volcanic rocks, and they typically have a very sparkly side on one side, such as this one, and a waxy apparent side on the opposite side. However, I personally don't find this side to be waxy. Uh, possibly it's not the right type of specimen for that. But I do think it's fascinating. I do love the other side. See all of that growth structure. It's really neat. I absolutely adore this one. <laughs> uh, so this is a white chalcedony rose. Sometimes this one is referred to as dream agate or more aptly and probably my favorite cave flower. And that's because they are found attached to volcanic rock walls at various places all over the world. But could you imagine plucking these from cave walls? like? <laughs> oh my god, I would die to do that. That would be amazing. Look at that neat structure. Mm -hmm. I adore them. All right. So there are just a few of my chalcedony pieces, but like I said, I'll be doing videos for the other kind of subcategories. Um, I hope you found this one a little bit interesting, and we'll see you next time. Bye!